All right, what are we looking at here? What constellation? Okay, Orion. Now, Orion was named long ago, back when people actually had warriors that dressed like this. And you know what? That constellation hasn't changed. It just hasn't changed. Gee, that long ago, the same stories told about the same night sky that's up there, stars must be immortal. Now we know death happens on planet Earth, but stars must be immortal. That must be where immortal souls go after death. That must be where the great god or gods reside, somewhere outside this realm of death and suffering, up there in the heavens. Well, let's see what science has revealed in the 20th century about whether stars really are immortal. Now here's the scientist who began the change. In 1572, Tycho Brahe, and then in 1604, Johannes Kepler, great European astronomers, both witnessed something happening in the sky that just knocked their socks off. And it began the whole shift, not just in our scientific view in the world, but where religions had to start coping with understanding that their worldview had to shift too in order to be compatible with the science. Well, let's see what they, did, what they saw in the, in the sky. In 1572, Tycho Bray walked out one evening, even before the sun had set, looked up at the sky as he normally does, and wow, there was a star that was visible in the day before any of the other stars and planets became visible. What in the heck was that? And then when night fell and he could still see this star so much brighter than any of the other stars and planets, he could see that it resided in a part of the night sky where no star had ever been documented before. He called it a nova, nova meaning birth, star birth. We now know that it signified star death. The new star outshined all other stars in brightness and was even visible during daylight. Now, he could not believe this because it completely conflicted with his worldview of the perfection of the heavens, immortality in the heavens. Here's what he wrote about it afterwards. When I had satisfied myself that no star of that kind had ever shone forth before, I was led into such perplexity by the unbelievability of the thing that I began to doubt the faith of my own eyes. I mean, this happens to all of us. But here we have a scientist who had a, 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 a predisposition about how the world is, which at that time, before there was any scientific understanding, it was inherited from the ancestors. It's your religious cosmology. Again, nothing changes beyond the moon. Nothing changes. That's the realm of God. That's divinity. That's immortality. Now, look what happened. As a scientist, he decided to measure parallax. And that is the star stayed bright for a while. And as the Earth traveled around the sun, he could measure exactly where that star was relative to the other stars. And then later on, when the Earth had changed its position in, in orbit, measured it again and found, found that there was no shift. There was no shift between, it's how our bi binocular vision works, getting depth perception. Well, it turns out this star was 7,500 light years away a long way away. So there was no shifting that went on. That meant it was in the realm of the, of, of the heavens, of immortality, where God resided, in the realm of the fixed stars. This new star is located neither below the moon nor in the orbits of the seven wanderers, but in the eighth sphere among the other fixed stars. Seven wanderers, planets mean wanderer. These were stars, planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Mars. These were wandering stars. We had no idea Earth was a planet. We had no idea Earth was a wandering star, too. Look at how recently this understanding came. And the cosmology of that time is that the only places where you had imperfection are places closer to Earth than the sphere that the moon occupies going around the Earth. That's why you have meteors and, and comets and so forth that you could see. This really set him back. How do you make sense of it? Well, in 1604, uh, Johannes Kepler happened to be around when there was another supernova. Here's what it looks like today. This one is 20,000 light years away. It was the last supernova explosion observed in our galaxy. 
On average, scientists say in our Milky Way galaxy, about one elder star every century will go supernova and for a period of time become brighter than any of the stars we could see in the night sky. Now there was a supernova in 1987 uh, seen by an astronomer in the southern hemisphere, noticed just like Tycho Brahe right when he walked out at dusk, but it happened in, in a nearby dwarf galaxy, the large Magellanic Cloud. We haven't had one in our own Milky Way uh, since the time of Kepler, a little overdue. So let's take another look at Orion the Hunter with this new understanding that stars do die. The dinosaurs never saw any of those stars. All of these stars in, in the, that make the main uh, body of the Orion constellation are gigantic blue-white stars, much, much bigger than our, our average yellow star um, that we have. The bigger the star, the, the greater the gravity, and the quicker that it uses up its nuclear fuel. These stars tend to live only 20 to 40 million years. Our star, the sun, has a whole lifespan projected to be 10 billion years. So none of these could have been around 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs die out. More than that, Betelgeuse, in this corner of Orion, is a super red giant star. And scientists say that it looks like within the next 250,000 years, just a blink geologically, in the next 250,000 years, it's going to go supernova. And that'll be it for the Orion constellation. So again, take a look at this. This is a super red giant, and you can actually see it. These look blue, but bluish white, but in the night sky, it looks kind of orange. Starry heavens no more immortal, praise celestial finitude. Perish sons, prepare the atoms, here in me and also in you. So we understand that the death of stars is natural. But what's the creative role here? Can we say yes to the universe in the fact that our sun is going to die at some point? <laughs>